standing like a superhero in the background of the video. No, <laughs> when the light finally was my backup light, like, that's what I'm trying to charge. Today has been the most perfect day and obviously perfect doesn't exist but it's the right amount of everything for me in this day. I am grateful for a lot of things and when I'm really happy or passionate I love to talk about it and I love to embrace it because happiness is one of those feelings that Honestly, it's hard to really be able to grasp onto it because there's constantly new challenges arising and new things developing. But when you do find that moment in your life where things just finally feel so good and so complete, I just want to hold on to it forever. And today is one of those days where everything has been so good. Like this is me speaking to myself, but also like just sharing what I feel. First of all, I am grateful for the opportunity to do the project that I am doing. Um, I'm not going to explain the details to it, but I know the project that I'm working on. Um, I am grateful for the fact that I'm in SUNY Geneseo because this university has been the place where I discovered who I am. Like, I have embraced my strengths and weaknesses in SUNY Geneseo and I have gained resources in SUNY Geneseo. I've gained friendships and relationships and resources that I needed to be who I am today and Jenna CEO has an amazing community and I am grateful for that community because of the people in this place I am able to do this project I'm thankful for that collaboration I am thankful for my mom who's my biggest supporter my biggest believer my biggest fan and my biggest motivator because she has just been rooting for me and helping me in seeing aspects of myself that I don't really admire. I am grateful for every single professor I have had in SUNY Geneseo because I've taken away not only from the way that they teach but who they are as leaders and every single information that they've taught me in class I have utilized those skills to help me with this project. Um, I'm thankful for radio and what I've learned through my radio class, through the radio experience and through my director because that has strengthened my skills, my ability to be able to interview, to be able to edit, to be ambitious, um, to take initiative. Genuinely super grateful for that experience. I am thankful for the weather and the climate because it is absolutely stunning here in Geneseo. Like, the trees are changing colors, like fall is here and it looks amazing. The weather was beautiful today, not too hot, not too cold, not too chilly, not too windy, perfect. And I am thankful for the conversations that I had today, for being able to meet two special fire firefighters for my interviews and for this project. I'm thankful for people who are vulnerable and who trusted me with this project. Um, I'm thankful for Matt and Kelsey and I'm thankful for the community aspect of Geneseo. And I'm thankful for coffee because I got Duncan and I love it. I'm thankful for my growth and I cannot wait to see what's going to happen. Like. I believe in myself and I believe in this project and I know and I am hoping that God allows this to be as big as it's feeling inside for me and when it does I hope I can look back at this video 
to just further thank God for his love, for his, the strength that he's given me because God has been so, so good to me and my family and to everyone who has been involved with this project because this project has changed my life already. Matt and Kelsey have already changed my life. Um, this is big. This is big. This is significant. This is important. This is special. This is truly a gift. And it is not a gift that I'm taking for granted. So I'm proud of you, Rocio. And I am proud of every single individual who has shared something with me, whether that's kindness, whether that's guidance, or just someone who has listened to me when I talk. Thank you. I have decided to kind of just document my experience in producing the podcast project that I am working on. And there's been a lot going on. Um, there's been moments of this overwhelming joy in seeing how the community is coming together for this one particular um, project and to honor two important individuals that were part of the community. And there's also this overwhelming joy in the fact that I'm able to connect with people and find sources and just almost admiration for the growth that I've had as a communication student, as a journalist student. And that has been really empowering. And then there's also moments like right now where I almost feel overwhelmed with, um, uh, you know, a little bit of fear and hesitation. Part of it is because the way in which I need to navigate this is with delicacy because first of all, it is not my story to tell, but it's a story that I want to tell because it involves the community that I am in. And now that I'm so deep into this project, I almost have created an attachment to the stories as well. And this almost inspiration and motivation that I want people to learn and be educated through this. And honestly, I think these two individuals were really beautiful and I want people to see that. I want people to be inspired by them. But because of that, there's almost this pressure of my own expectations and also like, am I doing justice to these two individuals? Am I doing justice to these families? Because it's not just the way in which I view this project, but it's the way in which the families view this project. And if they think it's important and then my targeted audience, do I think that this is the right way to navigate a conversation and tell a story? So there's a lot that I'm like thinking about and there's a lot of del delicacy that I need to be wary about. And there's also this time constraint and not to mention when working on this project, not only do I have this hat of being a journalist but I'm also a student and I think that is why I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed is because I have to accommodate to my sources because their perspectives matter for this project and I have to accommodate to their timing because I want to be mindful that they may have other things going on um but like I mentioned, it's just difficult when balancing that accommodation and understanding that I also am very busy. And this is going to sound like I'm bragging and I'm not. It's just like to get an understanding of all these different tasks, right? So I work in admissions and I do presentations to recruit EOP students, which is a program that helps students with lower income households, first generation. And I also am organizing a committee to plan for New York City bus trips so we can get New York City New York City students to come to visit Geneseo and basically see if this is the right college for them. And I'm also an RA. And then on top of being an RA, I have a specialty position as an RA, which means I focus on diversity and inclusion within residence halls, specifically the South Village, which I want to say there's like four or four five residence buildings that I kind of have to oversee in ensuring that they're getting the information that deals with diversity and on top of that I also I'm thinking about the things that I'm doing I mean I'm a student I'm taking different courses and different courses have different requirements I feel like I'm missing another thing that I'm involved in Oh, I'm also a teacher's assistant, so I have a lot of grading to do and helping students when they email me. Um, and then I'm also an EOP ambassador, so that's 
another position from the state that I'm working with that also has separate meetings, that also does recruitment. And um, as you can see, all of that is really hard. And amongst all of this, I also have to find the time for myself and to recharge because a lot of this is me helping and listening to others. So there's a lot of energy that I'm giving out. And um, I'm not complaining about this project at all. Like that's not the point of this video. The point of it is to be transparent with the challenging process. And just that I think is going to be even more rewarding when I get to the end of this project because the fact that I was able to manage all these different responsibilities and still be careful and mindful of how this affects others is so huge and significant. And my time management skills are okay. Um, they're good in the sense that I'll get things done. They're bad in the sense that I am not taking care of myself, meaning I do not get enough hours of sleep. And so some days it can be more difficult than other days. But this is just an update of what that process looks like. And like I said, today is one of those more difficult days where it feels really overwhelming and draining only because there's a lot of expectations from me, from the type of responsibilities that I hold as a student, as a leader on campus, and as a journalist and making sure that I'm doing something that is ethical and accommodating to other people's needs. So that's where I'm at right now. Just wanted to release that information and kind of keep it as something to refer back to when I am looking back to the past from the future. Um, but I'm sure I will record on the days where I feel really happy and motivated and inspired because those days are just as significant as well. But I do want to be transparent and um, give you all a background of the truth of what really goes on when developing stories like this. December 15, 2022 was my last rounds of duty and it was my last time being an RA on duty and my ending to being an RA has arrived and I don't know, it felt good. Had a few conversations with a few residents and yeah, I'm just thankful for the experience and yeah. I'm really happy about the decisions I've made this semester, the challenges that I've taken, um, and I'm just really grateful. So that's my little vlog. My room is a mess, do not mind. But um, right now I have to study for my stats final that I have tomorrow um, and complete some homework. And yeah, that was my last duty shift with my amazing partner, my amazing co, not co, but like, my DD partner, so Eliel's who was my partner and she was awesome. So yeah. Hi everyone. There's been a lot happening, so I just wanted to update you all. So let me get all the way back to the beginning of last week because so much has happened in the time. First, I want to just thank God that He has blessed me in so many ways and I'm beyond grateful for the amount of blessings that he has given me, for the challenges that he has given me, for the love that he has given me, because he is truly working in my life and I see it and I believe it and I feel it and I'm thankful for that. Now I will be ranting a little bit in this segment because there are aspects that were a little frustrating that happened, but I'm not doing it in a form of complaining. I'm just doing it as like me trying to battle like my own perception of things and not looking at it as a negative thing or a positive thing and just looking at it as here's something that has been given to me and I can work with it. So just to preface that, like I'm not ungrateful for the things that God has given me. In fact, I'm aware that I should be more grateful because I don't want God to punish me or think that I'm not accepting his blessings. So the first thing that happened last week is it was exhausting because it was finals week and I had a lot going on and so I was a little stressed out but I figured things out and so did my finals did what I had to do and I had applied for this ambassadorship to get money for about five thousand dollars for this project 
which I will do a separate video because I don't have time because I'm about to do another interview right now, but I will do a separate video explaining that process. But essentially that ambassadorship is competitive. I'm competing with other students who have projects and there was a lot of fear in me applying in the first place. And the only reason why I applied is because my mom encouraged it. My mom said it doesn't hurt to try and you should do it. So I did it. And this is all for my project so that I would be able to pay for promotion and extra support for this project and for the school to be kind of on my side for this. So literally the day before my final exam for stats, um, I received an email saying that I was selected for the ambassadorship. And that was a huge blessing because in another video i'll go more in depth to it but essentially it it was another confirmation of god being like you're gonna be okay and i'm giving you permission to do this project the families of the two victims have been so supportive and kind to me from the beginning and that is another confirmation that god was listening and helping me through this entire project and again, like I said, I'll probably go more in depth in another video, but I was so scared for this to even begin. And the amount of progress that I have already established is astounding. And that is why I'm so grateful because I know that it's God helping me. I, I'm, everything that I'm praying for, I'm seeing it come into fruition. The next thing is I quit being an RA, which is really interesting because I didn't think I would ever do something like that. I don't like quitting things and I always try my best to keep on pushing it even if things get hard but you know I weighed my pros and cons and ultimately this was the best decision for me given that I'm a senior and given that next semester I'm going to be extremely busy especially with this project and I want to dedicate more time for myself for my friends and for this project so I wanted to be in Putnam Hall so badly because I lived there my sophomore year and it was a peaceful building and I got it. So I was just feeling super grateful because that was another evidence of God being like, you want this, here you go, you deserve it. Now, granted, God is not gonna give you everything like, here you go, butterflies and rainbows. There's gonna be some challenges and there were definitely some bumps in the road, which I'll probably get into another video. But essentially, um, I think I focused a little bit too much on the negative. I did my statistics finals and that frustrated me, frustrated me and scared me because there was a potential that I might repeat that class. And I still don't know what's gonna happen with that because I'm waiting for my final grades to come out. And then the way that my roommate approached me through text because I haven't met her in person was a little off-putting and did not rub me the right way. Um, so that was a little bit disappointing However, I am choosing not to look at it as a negative thing and I am choosing not to allow that to ruin all the beautiful things that have happened. So I'm trying my best to work on my mindset. What I'm about to say, I might not actually feel it, but I think just practicing it and faking it until it one day feels good or at least like affirming that, you know, verbally might help. But any challenge that I am given, I am not going to look at it as a negative thing that's going to bring me down. If anything, it's going to be a test for me that I want to prove myself that I can get through that challenge. That being said, there are a lot of good things happening and I'm feeling really empowered. And yes, I have a little bit of fear and doubt and that voice that keeps on telling me that you can't do it. But you know what? I am choosing to just go through this process, through this journey. And if there's a challenge, I'm up for it. <laughs> not physically like this, but I think everything that I've learned these three years in college, I think have prepared me for any new challenge that's going to come this way. And I trust God that any challenge that I'm in, I am not alone because I have him. So that is my message for today. That's all I wanted to share with you all. I have finally moved out of Onondaga Hall and I've moved into my new place and I'm really happy and I'm really grateful. And Man, I have great people around me, whether it's friends, professors, faculty, connections. I mean, God is just so good and I love him. And today I woke up in a much better mood than yesterday. And I'm glad that I don't have any fears weighing me down today. So that's my message for today. And I'll see you all in my next clip.